Hi, I'm Joe James, and I'm here today to talk to you about Dino. Dino is a secure server-side Java and TypeScript runtime. Dino is built on Java V8, Rust, and Tokyo. Rust is the primary programming language that Dino is built on, and Java V8 is the version of Java that Dino now supports. So both Node.js and Dino were developed by the same person, Ryan Dahl. He developed Node in 2009, and then 10 years later, and starting in 2018 and just launching in May of 2020, he's been developing Dino as an improvement over Node. Dino is really designed to fix some of the design flaws that are built into Node. Dino is not going to replace Node. It doesn't obsolete Node. They're going to coexist. Uh, however, Dino is, hopefully, a solution to some of the problems that Node offers. Node already has a very huge existing user base and a lot of existing code, documentation, tutorials, libraries, etc. So there's no way that Dino can replace everything that Node has already. However, in the longer term, Dino could become the more dominant development platform. So it's not fully backward compatible with Node.js. It'll run most of the same code all the same JavaScript will run. However, Dino has some different interfaces than Node does. And it has to, really, to fix some of the, the design issues that are built into Node. It's impossible to redesign Node from the ground up. So some key features of Dino. It supports uh, security by default. And there's a very significant difference between Node and Dino in this respect. Node tends to be a little too lax in security. It's really an afterthought. But with Dino, security is really built in. Unless you specifically allow permissions to your scripts that are running in Dino, those scripts cannot access files, they cannot access the environment or the network. So they're basically restricted to not having access to any of the resources on your computer unless you grant those per permissions. The no most significant new feature of Dino is that it has TypeScript support built in. It treats TypeScript as a first-class language. Dino has built-in TypeScript support right out of the box. That's a critical difference between Node and Dino. When Node was developed, TypeScript didn't even exist yet. TypeScript didn't even come out until 2012. But Dino was basically built to support TypeScript from the beginning. So Dino's support for TypeScript is excellent. It supports both JavaScript and TypeScript as native languages, or first-class languages, right out of the box. Dino ships as a single executable file. So you don't have to download a whole bunch of additional libraries or dependencies or anything else to get Dino to run. It ships as a single executable file. So it makes download and install very simple. Dino has a lot of built-in utilities, like a dependency inspector and a code formatter. It also has a set of reviewed standard modules that are guaranteed to work with Dino. Dino has excellent browser compatibility. Dino provides built-in tooling like unit testing, code formatting, and linting to improve the developer experience. And scripts can be bundled into a single JavaScript file. So Dino compared to Node, Dino does not use the Network Package Manager. So package management is drastically different than it is with Node. Node uses NPM to download and install packages. Dino does it very differently. It uses modules referenced as URLs or file paths. Third-party modules are imported as URLs. And once they're imported, they're saved into cache so that later you can still compile and run your projects, even if you don't have network access. All async actions in Dino return a promise. So Dino's top-level API is very different from Node's. So which to learn first, you're probably wondering, Node or Dino, if you haven't learned either one yet. It doesn't matter, the answer. So Node actually probably has a much bigger base of code out there, a much bigger uh, development community than Dino does. However, uh, neither one is going to be intuitively simpler than the other. So it doesn't really matter which one you choose to learn first. There are a lot of resources out there for helping you learn Node. So that's probably still a good place to start. And a lot of bigger companies are probably not going to sign on to the Dino bandwagon yet until there are a lot more resources available to support it.
Dino website is at dino.land. That's D-E-N-O dot L-A-N-D. You can see they have an announcement up top where they announce that they have a version 1.0 shipping. So this is their release candidate version 1.0, very first version. And you can see they have uh, some a little bit of information about it. They have installation steps, very simple to install. It's a single line of code. You can install this from a command prompt. Uh, they also have some getting started guide here, just a simple application you can run to test it. And then there's some documentation. There's uh, third-party modules, built-in modules and third-party modules. Also, the, you see links up here up to the top to the documentation, the standard library, and third-party modules. And on our GitHub site, you can see they have almost 60,000 stars on their GitHub site and 328 contributors. So it's a pretty active project here. And the GitHub site is at dinoland slash dino. So if we want to try installing that on my Mac, we can just copy and paste this line of code here. Go to command prompt. And run it. So Dean was successfully installed. That really only took uh, less than 30 seconds. If we want to run their test program, we can copy this little line of code here and run their little test program that they give us. So first I needed to copy and paste these two command lines. So these two export statements one at a time. And that basically writes the Dino command to our path in the MacBook. And there we go, welcome to Dino. So we got our demo app working. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.